All right, welcome everybody. Uh, in this section, we're going to be talking a little bit about problem solving integration. This is actually going to be the last section in the problem solving module, and uh, it works out pretty well because it's a nice little tie in to the, uh, the lean management sections that kind of come after problem solving. So, what we'll be taking a look at today with integration, just to lay out a couple goals to start. Uh, really what we want to do with this is kind of brainstorm on some ideas, look at a couple example ideas for how we can develop a problem solving management system. And what we mean by that really is just kind of a system in the abstract that can give some focus to uh, our problem solving efforts. So it's not something here, something there. It's kind of a coordinated, smart system in the way we go about it. Uh, what we want to do again with that, you know, is we want to make sure that everything that we're doing, no matter who's working on it or, or, or what areas of the organization it's coming from, they're working on it for a reason because it fits kind of with the broader goals and the broader direction of the organization. And then the last one is kind of a catch-all point. You know, if we've put in the resources, we've trained, we've developed some skills and capability to solve problems, now we want to make sure we've got something in place from a management standpoint so that we can ensure that we're actually using that on a daily basis. So, and as of course with anything else that we talk about, this the need for this type of system really comes from a business need that we actually put this problem solving into use so that we can start making progress on some of those things. And the kind of the key idea out of this is, is what we want to do with this. In addition to those three points is really at its root is we want to put something in place so that we can embed problem solving into our daily activities that occur you know at every level of the organization and so what that business need is uh, really is when we look at any organization um, it could be in any sector of industry commerce you know whatever it is any organization really needs to be able to see a couple key things in a problem solving context and those are you know what problems they're facing if they're actually solving those problems and if any help is required at any point along that problem solving process to kind of get over the hurdles and, and make sure that we're, we're following through on these things. And so when we take those, that business need, we can kind of translate it into some objectives that any problem solving system we come up with is going to need to meet. And those requirements in this case are going to be, we need something that's visible to everybody so it works as a good communication tool. We need something that can collect our problems in real time because it doesn't help us if we know what went wrong six months ago in trying to make improvements today. Uh, we also want something that can help us create some accountability to solve these problems, right? Create a sense of urgency, make sure we're following through those, you know, those types of issues. And then the last thing is we want something that allows us to plan and organize so that we can provide support where it's needed. We don't want to we don't want to waste our resources uh, putting them in places where they don't necessarily need to be. So to kind of get into this, uh, what we'll take a look at really is kind of a typical condition uh, within an organization that has done some lean work in terms of how they structured some of their work cells and processes. Uh, maybe they've got some problem solving in place, but maybe on the management side, this is kind of what we typically find when we go into uh, an organization and start doing some of this work. So say we've got a model process, they put in some of those lean tools where you've got a team member, um, he's got some work instructions that let him know uh, normal, abnormal conditions. Uh, he's got some tools to communicate any type of issue should something come up. And then that, that team member has a manager above him. So maybe he's on a team of seven, ten, whatever the case may be. So what we see is when there is a problem, that team member has a couple, couple different ways to communicate that issue to their manager, right? They can document it if they've got these tools in place. They can signal it with an and on, a visual signal to say, hey, someone come over here, I've got an issue or they can communicate it verbally, right? Now, what we find most often is that the manager, maybe their standards are a little bit more lax. And so what they'll have in place is kind of an understanding that the manager should respond to that problem and he should, or he or she should solve it to the best of their ability, right? But what that leaves is a couple gaps. You know, the first one is that this system doesn't necessarily address um, for the manager kind of by how much and by when, right? So it doesn't necessarily tell them, should you drop everything and solve this? Or should you spend half your day on it? Time when you get to it, as you get time, how important is it? Uh, by when, you know, should you do this right now, tomorrow, a week from now, when you get a chance, you know, next Tuesday? It's kind of vague. The other side of it is it doesn't really instruct the manager or he or she what they should do if the best of their ability doesn't solve it. Do you just call it good? You got it as best as you could and send it on down? Do you try and get a hold of somebody to help uh, when they're busy at your weekly meeting? You know, how, how do you communicate that? 
And what ends up happening is those types of issues typically result in creating a lack of urgency in responding to those types of daily fire type issues that come up all day long, every day, at every level of the organization. And that's a problem. Now when we say that manager, so say they, uh, in a specific instance, they do need some help, so they're going to communicate it to the next level up. And just for the case of this example, the next management levels, we'll just say that it's the vice president level. So they communicate that problem. What we find, kind of with the manager, except generally it's a little worse at this, at the higher you go in management, is there's no real standard for how that manager communicates the problem or how that vice president communicates the answer back. Most times we find it's some sort of verbal communication. You know, an email, they, someone will stick a head in someone else's office, at a meeting, pass in the hall, right? But there's no real record. We don't really know what's going on. Again, no indication of by how much, by when, what should be going on. We, there's no expectations we've created for what progress we're going to make on this. Same thing, we carry it up to the top level in this example, the CEO level. The VP can communicate to the CEO, but again, no real standard in coming back down. Verbal communication typically there also. So kind of this overall system is, you know, we've got some good tools in place at the team member level on the line, but then kind of the back end, the upper end in terms of how we support problem solving from a management level, uh, typically what we put in place sets the stage for there to be not very responsive which is which is a uh, you know a complaint a lot of times you'll hear from the team members so what we want to do is we want to drive that typical condition into a more ideal condition in terms of lean problem solving and what that looks like is we have that same model process but when we have a problem in this case we want it communicated to the manager and this is where this kind of problem solving this integration system that we're talking about comes in and to this point it's kind of an abstract concept so I just it's represented really here with a black box that just says system on it we don't really know what it's going to look like yet. We're just defining what it should do. So that system, it should allow the manager, when they see there's an issue, to quickly respond to it, and the system should support being able to document that problem. So now it's visible. We can see it. We know something's happened. We have a record of it. That way, the manager can then either solve that problem, or if they need to call for help, there's a mechanism where they can level that problem up to the VP level, right? It's consistent, same system. Same thing at the VP level, they can respond and solve that problem, or if they've got to level it up, if they need support, if it's outside their scope of control, they can level it up to the CEO level, where they can return problem solving support as needed, when it's needed. And what we've really done here is, as you can kind of see with these, the way we've daisy chained these loops together is, when there's an issue, we can level up the scope of control effectively, because the goal here with what we're doing is, when there's a problem, we want to try and get it in front of the person that has the authority and the capability to solve it as quickly as possible. In an hour, in 30 seconds, in two days, in a week, whatever the case may be, but as soon as we can get it there, that's when we want to get it there. The other side of it is, now we've put a system in place so that the communication can come back down the chain. You know, no more reporting an issue and it gets just, you know, dispersed into the universe. We can see what's happening, who's working on it, when they should be done, so everyone up and down the chain is in the loop as to what's going on. We know what our expectations are. And when we do this, it creates an opportunity from a peer management standpoint of now we can just manage these loops. We've kind of broken the whole system down into a couple kind of key little, little circles that we can keep track of and we can manage. And so in this case, if the manager is, is keeping track on, of, of his team members or her team members, right, solving those problems, responding, and that loop is working, then the VP can monitor that manager team member loop and see what's going on, jump in when they need, provide support when it's needed. The same thing, the CEO can see what the VPs are doing, see what the managers are doing, support as needed when it's needed. We can be smart about it. And kind of what this does when we put it in place is, is really kind of this critical chain of thought. And when, in terms of problem solving at an organizational level, what we want to do is the first thing is we want to document because when we have documentation, now things become visible. We can see what's going on. And when we can see what's happening, we can create ownership. We can assign it to individuals. And when you have ownership of an issue now, that's how you can create and enforce and support accountability. So the best way to deal with that lack of urgency issue is to build some accountability into the system. And that's what we're trying to do as what's represented more in this ideal condition mock-up. So then we want to look at, in good problem solving uh, terminology, that gap between that typical condition and what we'd like to see in an ideal condition.
And again, that gap being that difference. And so really what we found is just kind of a couple key points between the typical and the ideal is that in that typical condition, it's difficult to sustain that sense of urgency, right? A lot of verbal communication, it's not real clear when people should be doing what, who should be doing what, why they should be doing it. Uh, it's hard for management to ask for help. You know, do you just stick your head in someone's office, leave them a sticky note? You know, what do we do? How do we keep track of that? We can't see what's going on. It's difficult to transfer ownership. Say I get to a problem and I get stuck and it goes into someone else's area and I need their help. How do I assign that to them in a way that makes sense and that that person is okay with? Uh, the last two things in terms of being able to communicate it and being able to manage those resources because it's kind of, if our problem solving is just kind of happening scattershot all over the place, typically everything is the most important and it's hard to plan what we're doing. And when we have no way for people to be able to see what's happening, you know, people are out of the loop. No one, no one knows what's going on. It's hard to work on teams that way. So we really want to address these kind of key points so that we can close that gap and move our system closer to something that's a little bit more ideal. So just a quick sample countermeasure, and this is probably the most basic you can get. It's just a simple problem solving board. And what it does is a couple things. You know, the first thing is it collects all of our problems in real time, that documentation, that visibility side. It shows us status at a glance so we can see who's working on what problems, what the problems are, what the progress in problem solving is. Are we at step three, five, are we stuck, what's going on? It's kind of a command center. It uh, allows you know, individuals to call for help, to transfer ownership. It keeps, it's a very fluid, uh, you know, very fluid kind of design so that it can react in real time. Uh, the other thing it can do is communication. So problems can get leveled up, problems can get come down, we can assign who's working on what, we can build in that accountability. And then that last key point is huge in terms of supporting resource management. Because when we have a dashboard and we can see everything that's happening, now it gets easy to coordinate and decide what's most important and where our resources need to go, not just what the squeaky wheel is. We can be smart about what problems we're solving. So when looking at how this works, we'll just use a, a quick, simple little mock-up for it, and it's pretty basic. So we want to separate those, separate those management loops from that ideal, that ideal example. So you have the manager loop, and each one of these little uh, stand-in sheets represents an individual manager. So in this case, you've got five managers. And then the next one up is the VP loop. So there's five managers that report to two VPs. And then at the top, you've got one CEO that oversees everything. And most, most management structures are set up like a pyramid. A, you know, every organization will be different, so this is just a mock-up. But each one of those sheets then shows the problem-solving status for that individual or that, manage, you know, that manager of that group, the VP of that area, you know, whatever it is, the problem-solving that's occurring in that group. Uh, what problems are being worked on, the status of those problems, if there's any issues, uh, the targets for when they should be completed, all of that type in, of information is presented on this dashboard. So we'll take an example problem. And so you've got uh, your problem solving sheet that your team members are recording their issues on. So we'll pick one problem that comes up. Now, if the manager responds to that, they can't solve it right on the line, that problem gets transferred to the manager to follow through. So in this case, that problem got transferred to the manager of group A. Everyone can see that, we can stay on top of it. Now it's visible that that is a problem that that manager is working on. So say so they get into it and they realize, I don't really have the authority to make decisions or this involves some things that are outside my level of control, I need to get help on it. Well, they can level it up to their VP. So in this case, the VP of area one. Now everyone can see that that problem has been transferred, who's working on it and why. Now say that VP gets into it and during his, his or hers root cause analysis finds out that it's really happening in another area, they can transfer that ownership laterally as well and we can keep track of that, we can see that, we know why that's happening. It gets away from a lot of finger pointing. And then in that case, just to follow away, all the way through, say that implementing the solution for this problem now requires some work on the CEO's part, we can level it up there. And what we've really done with this now is that team member at every step of the way can see what's happening with that problem they reported. Individual managers can see who's working on what, the VPs can see what their managers are working, the CEO can see what everyone is working on, and now we can be smart about coordinating our problem solving efforts. So with just that basic example and looking at being interested in trying to close that gap between the typical and, and that ideal condition we'd like to get to, does this, uh, this sample problem board, this little dashboard, does it help us meet our target? So do we have a mechanism to call for help? Yeah, we do, because we can level those problems up. It's visible when someone gets stuck. 
we can use that as our communication tool. Do we have full visibility of our problems? Yes, we do. We can see what everyone is working on in real time. Can we transfer ownership? Just as easy as calling for help. You know, can we communicate our status? Again, it's visible. Everyone can see the status of what's being worked on and who's working on it. Can we manage our resources by that? Absolutely. You know, we can see if this individual has a thousand problems on their plate. Maybe we shouldn't assign one more thing to them. Or maybe we now have the ability to say, you know what, of these five things you're working on, number three is really the most important. Let's make sure we get that done. And if you need help, let's bring some resources in from this individual who's maybe only working on two problems to help get it done because we want to get it done now. So yes, we can manage those resources. And then that last bullet, have we created a sense of urgency? Well, with, with this type of dashboard or any other system that accomplishes these goals, we have accountability built in because we can see who's working on what, we can manage that responsibility, we can manage those results, and now we can create some urgency because we have a mechanism that we can define expectations by. And that is absolutely critical to the success of being able to implement kind of a, a cohesive, smart problem-solving effort at a full organizational level. So yes. And now this last thing I just want to bring in because we really talk about most of this from the management side of it, which kind of takes the focus away from really where most of the problem solving actually happens. So that daily problem solving, you know, those fires that there's always too many of that we can't always put out, you know, those types of problems, the majority of problems that come up and that we deal with are being discovered and are driven by team member input. The people on the front lines in the work cells doing the work are the ones that find these issues, quality issues, uh, you know, shutdowns, equipment problems, whatever it may be, you know, people don't show up, whatever it may be, they're the ones that find that first and report it and are working on it and deal with it. What we want to do with, with our problem solving, kind of our, our management system, is now be able to respond to, address, and support fixing those problems in a smart, efficient, cohesive way. The other side of it, and this is you recognize from the philosophy section, is that the team members really have the biggest role here because the problems that they identify and then in a lot of cases the actual problem solving effort to uh, to solve that problem really is a ground up activity so those are the people those are the resources that's that human capacity that we use to accomplish these goals and what we do with this with this management system or this problem solving system is now we have a mechanism where management now can support that and help and not and be proactive in terms of fostering and encouraging and being more effective at a full organizational level. So that concludes this section and again this is just a quick brief one um, because it is important to look at not just solving a problem but then how do we manage what problems we're solving and so it's a good segue from you know the formal problem solving the techniques the methods actually into the lean management module which comes up next so as always any questions about um, about the material covered here just direct it to the website and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone for the next section. Thanks.